All right, Scott here. Hope you're having a good week. So we had some some good movement in the yen yesterday. Hopefully you managed to capture one of those moves. Uh, a few you know, unpredictable moves as well, unfortunately. But let's get into charts. There's, a, there's not really much that much on today. It's been a, been a Friday. Um, it's nice to get a nice quick win under your belt before the weekend. Um, a lot of people don't hold positions over the weekend because of the, the carry cost of that trade. But um, maybe you're one of those who do. If you take longer term trades, that's, that's all fine. But let's have a look what we've got on for uh, today. Let me just share my screen. We'll go straight into the charts. All right. Here we go. This is the one that I managed to get into. Um, most of the yen pairs played out as a short yesterday. Uh, I managed to get in after this test of 382 and the one hour 50. On, this is on the one hour chart down here. Uh, I've also started putting on these little notes on here so I don't forget things. So it becomes ingrained in my mind to, to follow my trade management and check all my checks before I actually take the trade. Uh, so <clears throat> then you presented here and I entered on the uh, break of the five minute 50. So we actually have a quick look at that if you're interested in this sort of, this sort of, uh, this is one of those most important parts of the trade. Two really important parts, sounds obvious, but they are the make or break things. First is your entry. You want a good entry price and you want to be reasonably confident that the trade is going in your direction or going to go in your direction and continue. Uh, and the second part, of course, is trade management. So you don't have, um, you know, big profits to get eaten up while you're not taking those profits or any part of it. And you don't want the trade going, going for you and then against you and then even hitting your stop and actually losing money on that trade. So that, that are the two major things is your entry and your trade management. So I break, uh, I entered on this, this is a five minute chart. Uh, it looked like it was accumulating here. I was quite happy with that up at the 382. Remember it already broken the four hour 50. So it already broken that and gone back to the one hour 50. So it's looking quite good there. Um, and then the five minute 50 broke here, but very aggressively. So I didn't manage to get in there. Uh, I waited for it to pull back, which is a bit risky. If it doesn't pull back, you don't get in. So you, you lose the opportunity on that trade. But if it does pull back, then you can get in at a side better price. So I, I got in just here and <clears throat> pretty much went in my favor all, my, all the night when I was sleeping. None of the charts. And this morning I did my risk removal phase one and phase two, putting it down to break even. And then recently I started putting my secure profit lines in here. So my secure profit is, I'm trading the five minute 50. So there's a big swing here once it breaks to a new low. I secure my profit here and I put that, make sure that goes into my MetaTrader. So my, should it pull back? That profit is secure. That's about 0.9%, I think. Still going. So it needs to pull up, make another lower high. As it breaks the low, I will move my secure profit further down. Enough of that. Okay, hopefully you got in a, a yen trade. The best one, I think, was Aussie yen. That really did uh, tank nicely. And that would have probably be up 2% by now. I think it was a very aggressive move. So what have we got for today? Aussie CAD. I think all four of these are pip snatchers. Uh, no, they're not. Three of them are. One of them's another yen. We may still pull back, but it's not looking very pull backing at the moment. Okay, so this one is we go to uh, the daily. What we have here it looks very messy. And it is. But from this trend line here, strong trend line on the daily, we've got a, a wave one, a wave two pullback, a wave three, a wave four pullback. Now we're in wave five. So there's a good chance it'll pull back down to these lows. Um, I should be one day 
for today. So you see it's come down here and it's pulled back towards the daily 20 and now it seems to be going lower again. So let's have a look at the lower time frame and see what it gives us. So yesterday we had it pull back, we're in a downtrend, we've got lower highs and lower lows from this point here. Um, it broke the one hour 50, pulled back to the four hour 50 quite aggressively, but, but decelerating all the time. You see there's a kind of wedge thing forming here. Put that one there. And this one here. They're working, no, come on. Uh, so we've got some kind of wedge form in there. And once it hit the 4 hour 50, it broke down quite aggressively. Then it did a, a pullback to the 1 hour 50 and then went short. So it's quite a nice looking trade there. Should you, could you, if you actually jumped on that one. Uh, but not an easy one to spot. I didn't spot it until one of my colleagues um, pointed out to me this morning. So what do we have now? Well, we have a... Uh, we're in a downtrend, it looks like from the, from the 4 hour 50 here, we've got a lower low, lower high, lower low. And it's doing an ABC pullback here to the 1 hour 50. And that could give us um, a short trade, just a one to one, in at the end of the pivot, which is actually touching right now. But I'll wait for it to hit the 1 hour 50 if I was going to take this. Um, stop behind R1. Take profit at 1% for a quick one to one. Um, there's nobody much else. You could take it on as, a, as another breakout. We've already had the initial breakout here. The first one was actually last night. So this is the second one. So it doesn't really count. And the lows were down here. So there's maybe, yeah, maybe there's um, potential for a bit there, but it's not the initial breakout anymore. This is the second pullback. Elliott Wave. Uh, what do we have? From the 4 hour 50, we've got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it might not go much below this point here, these lows just here. On the 4 hour, we've got a wave 1, wave 2. This is a wave 3, which is implying it could go a lot lower. So a bit mixed there. Nothing really big on, on the table, just a possible 1% grip snatcher there. Okay, let's go look at it. Oh, Euro Aussie. So it's been in an uptrend for the last couple of weeks. So we've got a wave one, a wave two pullback, a wave three's in motion, I think, and this is like a wave uh, wave two pullback of wave three, and this is wave three of wave three. Um, not that clear, especially with the funny market movements on Monday. But if we do a fib extension from the, from the lows, <clears throat> up to the end of what appears to be wave one and back to what, be, what appears to be the beginning of wave three, usually the fear of extension will give us 1.272 price target or maybe 1.618, one of those two, which means we've got a fair bit of room up here <clears throat> to go long. Very bullish candle yesterday, supplying some uh, momentum to, to the upside. Um, weekly is looking quite bullish and we've got a Massive MACD on the weekly, so that's implying higher prices. So looking like we're still going to go long, long go up from here with a long position. So this is the one to one. When our foot is catching up nicely, should it pull back to the pivot, we could get a one to one in there. And we could even I measure this up before. So if we did go for four to one for a hyper trade. The actual 1.272 extension we looked on the daily is about here somewhere. So we, we've, it's possible it can pull back here, then make a run for that, uh, that end of the wave three on the daily, which would be a nice little 4% um, move here. Even if you only capture 2 or 3% of it, still could be a nice trade. So that's something to think about. If this does pull back, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Uh, pound yen. So this is the only yen pair I can see that I like for a possible trade um, today. KG yen also could pull back, which I'm already in. This is the pound yen. So we can see we've had um, got a resistance zone here. It's hit, bounced off nicely. 
lots of bearish pressure. We've now hit the daily 20, so we should be aware of that. And it looks like it's not going to pull back. So I, I measured this up uh, an hour or so ago, and since then it's moved down quite aggressively. So it looks like it's not going to pull back till it's the daily 20. Perhaps if it does hit the daily 20, then fibs don't really line up for a, a CBO. Uh, maybe if we do it from here. And this pullback is not, not the greatest of fib placements there. Of course, if we go back to the top, actually, maybe we can go if we can ignore that news, a wick of the news, and go up to here somewhere. But that's not too bad. If it does pull back, there could be a chance to get in on the CBO. The four hour will be here, the one hour will be coming down. Then you will be around here where the pivot is, this daily pivot line. Um, Stop up here somewhere. Check down to the daily 50. 1.4%. So it's, that's not too bad. Not ideal. Actually, I haven't got that right over. Oh, yeah, I have from entry to the pivot. If you can get an entry to evacuate the 4 hour, if it does come back and retest the 4 hour, then we got to 1.7% potential profit. Um, a few things to play with there. If it pulls back, we have to wait and see on that one. That's a possible trade. Dollar CAD is another one which, which I've spotted. So we've had this, this is the daily. Dollar's been in a, in a choppy but upward trend for quite a while. It hit this level here, which it stalled at. Now here's a good uh, a good reminder of a doji candle. Everyone thinks the doji candle is a reversal candle. No, it's not. A doji candle is indecision. If a doji candle at the top of um, a trend is a reversal candle. But when you've got a really bullish candle like this the day before, then that's, that's just indecision. And we've shown that yesterday with this bullish continuation. So uh, always be wary, be wary of the doji and where, where it is in your price pattern. Anyway, so we got some more bullish action yesterday. What have we got on the one hour? Uh, again, I'm looking for a pip snatcher. If it does, quite a very aggressive move up. If it does come back, do a snatch around the pivot. The one hour fit is quite a long way behind. Dollar CAD probably won't present for another six, eight, ten hours. It gives that time to come back here, maybe, and go for one to one trade there. To see what happens there. I've got a few other ones which I'm. Um, where's it going? A few other ones which may set up soon later today. I will quickly look at those. So one is Swiss yen. So two more yens. Uh, Swiss yen on the daily. Again, we're still waiting for some downward pressure. The Swiss has been quite strong, which is why the Swiss yen has not really broken down as aggressively as other ones have, but it started to break down. So maybe that's a sign. It did have a fallback last night, but it did pull back quite a long way behind the one hour 50. It's now broken through again. You could take this as a second IBO, discretionary. We've already had the first one, but it's pulled back a long way. So we can take this as a possible IBO. Should it reverse around where it is now, a little bit lower, it could be a trade in there. The only disadvantage with this, we've got a lower high, but we're going to get a higher low if it, if it turns around about here. If it comes down to here somewhere where S1 is and gives a lower low, that would be a much nicer, um, much nicer price pattern. And then we will have a confirmed trend change with a lower low. And that by then, that 1 hour 50 might catch up. So that's possible, and then we can trade that to the 4 hour 50, which probably won't be great profits, but you can take that further if that's your style. That's, that's a possible one for later. Dollar yen, similar kind of thing. Dollar's been strong as the yen has been gaining strength, so that would be struggling to break down as well. I've had this trend line in here for a while. It's not the strongest, but it seems to be respected. Finally broken through at this hour. So maybe we'll get a breakdown retest of the one hour 50 and this trend line. Um, 
I'll zoom in a little bit. Then maybe get a yeah, retest of the one hour fifty back here somewhere a bit later on. The fibs aren't great. We've only got choice of this one, which is quite tight, or these highs, which is very loose and won't line up. So we have to see how that one plays out. And I'll very really briefly cover the other ones. Aussie Swiss. I'm going down forever, really, really oversold. Uh, we've got a big MACD from this low here to the to the new lower low, but a higher, a higher low on the MACD, MACD divergence. I call it a MACD, but it's a MACD divergence I'm talking about. It's been a quite a bearish day yesterday, so it probably won't happen till very late today or maybe Monday. RSI is very oversold. At the uh, the 30, 30 level with a buy line, potential buy line. Uh, so we go back to the one hour chart. Um, so we had a very bearish day yesterday. We need some confirmation and that will probably come in the break of this trend line, which is obviously not great. We've got three touches so far. But it's parallel to this trend line here, which goes way back. And that's been broken before, come back, broken at the other side, but that's been respected now. So that has broken for good. This one is, seems to be parallel to that. So um, this could be important. Waiting for a break of the one hour 50 and a retest, something like up here, up here, down here. And I'll have to shift my chart over before I mess all up. And that could give a nice little trade. That's that one I happened to on Monday, but worth keeping an eye on. Keep your CAD. Another one that's we've got a, a MACD divergence. We've got um, stalling at this level, quite a strong level on the daily to the hourly. And it's been bumbling around quite a lot. We need a break of this, a really strong break of this one hour 50. We need to break through from here, come up here, back to here, and then trade up. So that might give a, a nice trade, maybe later today, maybe Monday. And the last one we look at is Kiwi Swiss. Uh, very similar kind of chart pattern, but a bit more bearish. Um, we even have a MACD. Divergence, quite a strong one, even though this is way lower. So we're looking at some kind of reversal sometime, but we're not going to try and catch a falling knife. We're going to wait to see how this plays out. Again, we've got a bearish candle yesterday, so we need to wait for it to prove that it's changed direction. So this trend line here on the one hour goes way back, it's broken it, broken back through, broken again, broken back through, we test again. So we need a break of the one hour trend line and a break of the one hour 50. And again, similar kind of thing up here, down here, retest, and there's our trade. So um, that's something to worth, worth watching as well. Okay, good, that's it. Let's just put the camera back on, stop share. So I hope you found that useful, try analysis. Uh, have a look at my watch list. There's some other ones in the, in a, in the main watch list, which are um, not quite as good or they're further away from setting up. But uh, might be worth watching in case things ha can happen quite quickly. So Friday, we want quick wins today. So good luck trading the markets. Have a great weekend and I will see you Monday. Take care.